Thanks for coming back. Today, we're doing something a little different. We're back down here in my basement shop, but we are going to be working on this battery eliminator. So I don't usually get into electronics like this, but I have an expert coming who knows what the hell he's doing. So we're gonna break into this thing and we're gonna be replacing the selenium rectifiers with a new, I don't know what this is called, but this is what I was told to buy. It's very small, this is supposed to take care of it. If I actually ended up buying all the right parts for this, this project should go pretty smoothly. So let's hit it. You're watching On The Mark with Mark. Besides the selenium rectifiers, we're also going to be replacing these cables. These are decent for charging a car battery and they get kind of a hokey uh, wing nut here. So we're going to be replacing those with these, I believe they're, they're called like banana ports or something. Or maybe this is what's the banana clip. Anyway, it's gonna get it's gonna get three of these put on here: a black, red, and a ground plug. And then what this does is this makes it really easy. You just plug right into there, and then it has really nice clip where I'll be able to just snip onto some small wires when I need to. What I do mostly with this thing is. Well, you saw me in my last video, I checked the light bulb and I also checked the solenoid in the uh, line lock system. Here's another thing that I might work on. I do model railroading and sometimes I have these little little bitty electric motors here and you need to clip onto a wire like that and these big clips just, they, they barely hang on, but these guys you hang on to that boy, it's on there. So that's really nice. You also have a, a nifty feature where where they plug into this that we're gonna get mounted on the battery eliminator. You can also, you can like piggyback onto them. Then you can have two places to clip onto the same. Uh, this'll be a ground. So that's kind of cool. All right, so we're gonna replace the selenium rectifiers with this little bridge rectifier here. And I'll, I'll get the model number across the screen there so you can tell exactly what we're doing. And this is my brother, Doug. He's very technically savvy with electronic stuff. So to help him, he's going to make some kind of a schematic diagram of, of what we got going here so that we can keep track of where we are and, and where we're going. Well, that's pretty typically the way it's drawn here, what we'll get, the diode the conducts in the forward direction. These two lines will come off here, and this is where your AC power is gonna come in, okay. on here. And then off of here is gonna be your DC output. And I gotta try and figure out they didn't you know, mount it in the package like they usually lay it out, you know, in a schematic like that. Yeah, so it should be like a diamond here, like that. Yeah, right. That's but what I normally expect. Because they've got the plus and the minus, like as if they were two of yeah. these. Yeah. Yeah, so, the, you know, like I said, we've got, uh, yeah, this is a plus up here and this is minus. And this is AC coming in here. So the only things we know on that is the one's labeled plus and one's labeled minus. And I was trying to bug it out earlier to see if the diodes were good. And uh, let's see, it's like, you know, here to here, it should be six tenths of a volt either way. Cause I don't understand what it's, how it's supposed to be bugged out then. I think we'll have to assume that it's good. <laughs> But yeah, that's a, it's a pretty straightforward little device to do that. And you got a monster one there that you're not gonna have any trouble with 
blowing it up or anything like that. Great. While Doug does a little research, I'm going to open this case. Okay, we got a transformer here. That looks like a big capacitor. Yep. That could be live across there. No? Well, it bled down pretty quick. There's no voltage there now. Okay. And what are these two square things? Those are your selenium rectifiers right there. You've got a stack of two of them together and uh, on each side, you know, to give you the four diodes like I drew there before, that uh, gives you the full wave rectify rectification. Basically, what's that? That is, I believe, is a thermal cutout. If it's overheating, it's supposed to open up and stop it. Wow, it's got some corrosion on it. Yeah, the selenium rectifiers uh, sometimes do odd things when they get old, and there might be some stuff sliding down the, the metal <laughs> toward that. There's some kind of cobbled up joint there. Hmm. Yeah, they got it labeled their AC right there. Cause that's the AC coming off of the yeah. the uh, transformer. Yep, and then coming the, right off the transformer. And the DC is the the tabs in the center coming off of that. And the basically I don't see tabs in the center. Where are you pointing? Here. Oh. Oh, off of this thermal yeah. break, whatever it is. Yeah, well, it's the same thing as over here. Um, I don't think this is the one that came with it. <laughs> the ones that I recall from uh, Dad's were purple like that. And they no, were no. both the same size. But these, look at this bracket here. Yeah. It's longer than this one because this is a bigger square. That looks to me like factory equipment to oh, me. Okay. I'm just guessing. I'm just going by what I. Well, see. it might it might be a, uh, a different uh, manufacturer, you know, the, from the part anyway. Okay, and here's where our terminals are going to go. So this is what I was unscrewing from the front, and then one of these started spinning. Yeah. So I stopped turning it. Looks like just a screw was turning, so that's not a big deal. So we're going to put. Oh yeah, that one's loose. We're going to put plus and minus, and then we're going to put a ground off to the side, right? Yep, yep. Okay, great. A couple of the many things we're going to be doing to this battery eliminator is we're gonna be replacing these terminals here which just had wing nuts on them and were kind of lame. We're gonna replace them with this type here which has a, a hole in the side so you can stick a wire in there and tighten it down on it, or you can plug one of these banana clips into it, right into the end, and then you can snip onto something with it real easy. So make it nice, you know, good penetration there. So that's cool. So I've got three of these, and even though there was only two here to start with, I'm gonna put the positive and negative on here. Then I'm gonna add a ground over here on the side too, so that I can ground items while I'm working on them too, just to be on the safe side. One of the things that'll make this a little bit tricky is if you, if you look at the bottom of this, there's a boss on the bottom and it's actually D-shaped. This side over here is flat. And what you're supposed to do is there's a punch that you use that will punch that very same shape into this sheet metal. Of course, I don't have that punch, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill the hole out to the size of this boss, and then I'm gonna put this on, and I'm gonna put a little bit of my favorite compound, JB Weld, on there, and then I'm gonna tighten it up, and it'll conform to the shape of the D, and then it won't rotate. So there's a D on this too. It's not a very big boss, 
but it's enough by the time you get both sides there, you can kind of see the thickness of the metal that's gonna be there. So I'll be sure to get the, the two flat sides lined up together and then the nut goes on the back side and then this'll be good to go. Okay, now I've drilled out these two holes here so that these this new terminal fits right in there. So it just fits that, that little bit of a boss that's there. Now I need to drill one new hole and that's gonna be my ground lug. I'm just gonna space it right in between these two here. Just gonna use my step drill here and eyeball it good. Right there. There we go. And I got it low. That was nice. Well, that's what I get for eyeballing it. Okay, JB Weld in a cap. I don't need very much of this, so I'm gonna put these in with the flat part to the top. I'll try to do that with each one. And then I'm just going to finger tighten the nuts for now so that I don't twist the thing. So I'll start off by putting that under there. Boy, that's not gonna work. Let's start off with the black one. All right, so the black one is the bottom one. No, I'm back to the red one. All right, so I'm gonna put the red one up there with the flat spot. I'm gonna put the flat spot to the bottom because I can see that. And then I'm gonna goop a little bit of this JB Weld in there. Don't need a lot. I'm gonna put it right in there where that flat spot is. That's good. And I'm gonna take the other red part and put the flat spot to the bottom. All right. And then the washer. And the nuts. All right, leaving it right there. Okay, then the black one. I think that's plenty. All right. Way too much. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so I locate the flat side. Get the flat side facing towards me. Bring in way too much JB Weld into that flat side there. Just like that. Bring this side in. We'll find the flat side. Flip it over. Okay, I kind of moved it a little bit. And that isn't gonna go anywhere. Beautiful. Another thing we're gonna be replacing in addition to these selenium rectifiers is this capacitor right here. And it's got kind of a nifty mount here. It's got this, uh, it's a strap that goes around this cylinder. And here is the new capacitor that we're gonna be using. And of course, it's a little bit smaller here. So I'm gonna make a, a high density polyethylene collar that is gonna have this inside diameter of this and the outside diameter of that so that this can mount in the same place as this one using that same mounting bracket. So the ID is gonna be easy because I have these Forstner bits and it's got this cover for it. And so I just went through the Forstner bits and, and look at this. That's the size hole we're gonna get out of that Forstner bit. So the ID is gonna be really easy. And then as far as 
getting the OD. I'm just going to use a compass. I'll, I'll get a good measurement of this. I'll use a compass and I'll scribe a line and then I'll cut it close with the bandsaw and then I'll just sand up to the line. And then I need to cut a, 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 a slot in it so that it can compress on our new capacitor. I don't know if you can see that circle there, but I measured the diameter of that capacitor and then I've transferred that dimension to here and now I'm going to I'll go out to the garage to get to the drill press and I'll drill a hole in this. You can probably see right here there's a screw that actually tightens down. Well the nut is just spinning on the other side but anyway that's what's going to tighten down on our new part. Nice. Before I make this all round like a donut, I'm gonna cut the slot in it while I still have flat sides so I can get on the fence easier. It'll be safer for my cut. Now I just need to get up close to that line there so I can get my donut shape. As soon as I put this underneath here so I can make the cut, there's a shadow that shows up right here and then I can't see the line. I can see the line over here on this side, but I can't see where I'm cutting. So I'm kind of a mile off here. So I'm gonna end up having to sand all that out. I'm not going to disconnect this just yet because I want to keep track of where all these connections are. But I am going to pull it out of there so that comes out. I'm just going to lay it over here. All right, now let's see how our little donut here is going to work out. See if that fits in there. It's a bit tight. It could fit. Okay, that looks good. How about this now? No. All right. Okay, I'm gonna sand it a little more. Okay, fit number two. I, I slid the thing in there because it kind of expands out a little bit. And there, now that, when I tighten that screw down, that'll tighten up real nice. Okay, I, I can't put this in here without first rounding over the edges with the router, so it kind of looks like a little rubber tire, doesn't it? I'm putting it in. Okay, so it's going to go like that, and I'm going to put that slot towards the end that compresses there, like that. Oh my gosh, that looks sweet. What a nifty replacement. Yeah, she's tightening right up on there. Okay, that isn't gonna go anywhere. Now, I suspect that we just take one of these wires, hook it up to one side and hook it up to the other, but I'm gonna wait until Doug gets here and then we'll take care of it. I'm also not gonna mess with connecting these up until that JB weld has a chance to really set up good because I don't wanna risk twisting them a little bit and messing up the way that little D detent is in there. We're done for tonight. We're into it now, and I have my collar that I made, this adapter, to take the new capacitor, which is quite a bit smaller than the original capacitor. That's in there, and this is tightened down good. And now, all we need to do is just move these wires. This red, we're, we're kind of assuming that the red is positive, 
So this red side is going to go to this small side here, and this white band here has a negative on it. So this is the negative side. We're going to solder that right on to that end right there. All right, I've got one side of the capacitor disconnected here, and I've got it just crimped on to the negative side. And now I'm cutting the other side off. So now this is free. And I'm going to strip this wire here. You can't see what I'm doing. There we go, I'm bringing this around here. It's a little short. Now I'm gonna solder that. All right. We're getting ready to take the selenium rectifiers out. We've got the transformer disconnected. What's this part called? They just call it relay in schematic. Okay, this relay, it was uh, had a nut on it, so we just pulled that terminal off. And we cut this side here. This is, what is that, the power side? Well, that's actually the positive side of the rectifiers that's used when it's in 12-volt mode. When it's in 12-volt mode. Okay, so these are coming right off here. Okay, but we still need to keep that part, so we'll get that off of there. Okay, we've got the rectifiers off, and now this is the bridge rectifier has been mounted on here. So now we just got to get our connections made here. Hmm. Oh, and that starts with these two wires coming off of the transformer. So it doesn't matter which one we start with, right? Yep. Okay, and then we go to... The schematic under that show. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So, okay, AC, this is the transformer. So the two opposite, the little notch that's in it. So here and here. That's where we need to take these two. So I'm going to have to get a little bit of wire to add on to this. And then we're also going to use some connectors here. And then we've got some 90s here too, which might be nice to come off that way. So that'll be good. All right, let's make this happen. So I've made up two of these wires here. These are gonna go to these wires here on the transformers and one of them goes on here. It's kind of in the wrong direction, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Like this, there we go. Oh, isn't that slick? And then this one goes right there. And now we just bring it over here and we solder to, ooh, that's a tight fit there. Which one reaches further? It looks like it'll be this one. That'll work. Okay, I'm gonna strip these wire and wires and then solder them onto there. All right, now we've got these two wires. Actually, there's two wires in each of these that are soldered together onto this one wire, and then I have a terminal here, and then we're hooked onto the bridge rectifier on these two opposite corners here. We need to hook up the, the uh, downhill side of that uh, rectifier and figure out a place to put your thermistor and the relay, whatever that really is. I don't think it's a relay, it's only got two terminals. So these two here, these seem to be the only wires we have left, eventually make it to here. Yeah, this goes on to that, and from there it goes to the negative terminal of that, which is... Uh, Maybe this one? Um, yeah, the one opposite the, the corner, double corner one. This one back here, so... Yeah. So these, that goes back on there. Yep. Maybe that is just gonna hang out. Boy, they didn't give us much to mount it with. We can't use these screws, right? I'm sure you can. Well, I mean, they don't come out. No, I mean, we can't. Oh yeah, you can't screw them to the chassis. Right. Because they're gonna be hot. Uh, all right. So I need some kind of a mounting for this. I'm gonna have to think about that. Uh, so that's this side to here. And then this side needs not this or yes, this. Um, what is this? Tell us about this. 
that is uh, what they call an inrush current limiter. It uh, has a high resistance when it's cold, and when we turn on the power, the, it limits the current flowing through it until the capacitor charges up, and the, it's a thermistor inside there. It gets warm, and its resistance goes almost to zero. So then, after it is, uh, a, you know, a fraction of a second or so, just long enough to give the capacitor a nice easy start. And then we have full power available for whatever we want to do. Okay, but we don't know if it goes between this wire and here or not. We were kind of debating on yeah. some of these other. Well, I was going to say, in the schematic, it, I've tentatively drawn it in here in this line, but it can be in this line here. But it's got to be in one of those two lines. Okay, where the heck are those lines <laughs> in here? So that's sort that's of the, the tricky part. Yeah. We're going, okay, we've got everything connected again the way for the the new rebuilt version. So tell us about it, Doug. Well, the primary thing we did was replace the selenium rectifiers with a silicon bridge rectifier here, which is much more efficient, it has you know lower voltage drop on it. It's not quite as good against a short circuit as the selenium rectifier is, but We've got overload protection over here, and we added a thermistor back there that uh, uh, limits the charge current as it's uh, charging the capacitor so it doesn't shock the diode, shock the capacitor. You know, just make it a little easier on the thing. But as far as the rest of it, it's exactly the same as it was before. We've got um, the secondary windings off of this transformer are going to this rectifier. Yeah, it makes the DC on it, and down here it selects whether these two windings are in series or parallel. Uh, when they're in series, you've That's got... That's this switch right here. Yes, when they're in series, you have 12 volts, but only 10 amps maximum available. When they're in parallel, you've only got 6 volts available, but you've got 20 amps. You know, same power, just a little different form. Um, Hardly anybody has six volt batteries anymore, so it's really not terribly useful to have it like that. Um, and it's still got the metering that it had before. Um, this is one here, measures the voltage, tells what you've got going in there, and over here is your amp meter, so how much your load is drawing. We did replace the uh, original wing nuts that were on there with some nice five-way binding posts, and uh, just to make it a little prettier and and a little more obvious of which one's positive and negative too. Apparently it wasn't labeled originally. Nope. Um, and what about that? And we added a ground one, which is not actually hooked up yet, but will be at some point, um, tied to the chassis, which um, the power cord was replaced. Originally it had a non-polarized two-wire cord. Now it's got a polarized three-wire cord with a ground uh, for safety purposes, basically. and. The ground is available here if you needed it to attach to something or... So I'm going to tie a wire from here over to this ground right here, which is on the chassis, which of course is take, going right to the ground on the outlet. Mm -hmm. And then these two still need to get hooked up. I left these apart because it was just easier to not have to be dragging this thing around while we are working this over and, and you know, trying to see and, and tip mm -hmm. it and all. So. The hot is going to go on the switch side here, and the neutral is going to go up here on to this fused side. So I've only got what? I got to hook up that ground, the power, well, positive, and the negative, and well, well hot and neutral. Exactly. And then we'll see if it makes smoke. It's an expensive smoke generator, if that's what it's going to be. Uh, but we hope happen. not. <laughs> it could happen. We'll see what happens. All right, we'll get to that. I've got the power cords soldered on to their correct places. I've added this ground wire that comes over here to the ground terminal. So that's ready to go. Uh, I have it unplugged right now, so there's no power in here. And now this goes on here somehow. I got a bunch of screws to put in, and then we'll look at it. All right, we got it plugged in, and we're set on 12 volts. Okay, you should be able to see plenty of smoke from there. 
I'm just gonna unplug these just so nothing crazy is going on. And here we go. I'm gonna flick this on. It's like nothing happened. Well, that's what we should be expecting at this point. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. And there's the voltage. And dropping slow. Oh yeah. That's because of the capacitor, right? Mm-hmm. Um, could it be, it seemed like before when I did this, when it came up, that meter went, eh, blah, blah, was it just jerking all over the place. But maybe that's more, is this a potentiometer here? Well, what it is, is a contact sliding over the actual windings of the transformer. And so it's going from wire to wire to wire yeah. as it moves across there. And depending on how much oxide's on those wires, uh -huh. Uh, and the pressure on the contact, it's gonna do weird stuff. Wow, it went way past 20 volts. You got more more power than you had before. That silicon rectifier is taking care of that. Look at this, okay, here's 20, and I'm at about three quarters power, so now I'm gonna go up, it's still going, and now it's pegged, and I still got a little more to go. Now when it's actually got a load, it's not gonna go that high. Yeah, okay. All right, so do we want to uh, hook a meter up to it and see what we get for any readings on it? or Yeah, that? we could put a meter on it and see if it matches what it's saying here. Because that might be useful to know. Wait a minute. Little baby, that's probably only about a three volt motor. I'd be kind of, it'll go zing. Yeah. Uh, 12 volt. Ooh, you're okay. Yeah, all right. Well, don't run it up to 20, but yeah, you can. Let's, uh, we're gonna hook up this 12 volt motor here. Is this where we have the music playing? <laughs> Maybe. Or you're just making the music. That was me. Oh. I had it on. <laughs> yeah, it did that, didn't it? That scared me. Yeah. Now I really do got to wait for it to go down, right? Uh, yeah, or you could short out the leads and that would take that it down. That took it down. Okay, so now that's going there and get, there's our little motor. And here we go. Seems like that's working. And that meter's going up too. Oh yeah. I don't know that I trust that reading on this motor. I smell a little, uh, what is it, um, ozone? Yeah, ozone, well, that's not high voltage enough to really get you much ozone. A little bit. If, that's, if your uh, commutator there is arcing, you'll get some ozone. I'm just trying to see if there's a 1.2 <laughs> volts on there, but it really, it, I think it's 12. Maybe it's just 2. Anyway, that does work. Yeah. Okay, we got that down. Okay, so this is looking good. Got a nice fan running here. Was able to test that now that I have this. I test ran a couple of small motors here and I also test fired the solenoid on my line lock system that's going to be going on the Corvette. So we got this thing all buttoned up now. These are the selenium rectifiers. They're going to go in the trash and this is the capacitor that has also been replaced. Now the reason I did this is because those items, those don't have the longest life to them. They're pretty old technology. There's better stuff today. That bridge rectifier is gonna do a lot better job than what these selenium ones did. And capacitors just uh, don't age well, so we've got a new one in there. I'm not sure why that one's smaller, if there's something better about the technology today, that may be, I, I don't really know. Uh, that just about wraps it up though. I'm gonna put in the description um, all of the part numbers and the names of everything that I put into this, so if you're looking to maybe upgrade a uh, old battery eliminator like this, this one looks a little different than some I've seen before with this plate right here. In fact, my dad has one 
that looks almost identical to this that I grew up with. And that's kind of was the catalyst behind buying this. Once you're used to having something like this that you can test things with, you kind of feel helpless without one. And I've been looking for a long one for, uh, looking for a new one for a long time. And the big holdup has always been, well, the selenium rectifiers have gone bad in this. And I finally gave a little nudge and said, all right, well, I'm going to fix them. What does it take? And my brother, Doug, oh, I did want to thank Doug for coming over. He was over here two nights working on this with me. Um, we got the parts that we needed and we put this together. And uh, I had a good time working with my brother, Doug. I don't do a lot with him. So it was good to see him too. Well, that wraps it up. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful for somebody. This is what I did. Thanks. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Good, good, good.